Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create harvestable items. Now, this is going to require a little bit of work with NIFScope, but don't worry, it's really simple and I'll guide you through. So let's get started. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I am going to use one of Blairy's resources as a perfect example of how to do this. So I'm going to go to my data folder measures and Blairy stuff. And Blurry has all of these jars which are filled with ingredients. So it's kind of like the bug jars, just like filled with various items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bleeding crown as I've already gone ahead and tested it with this. And what's going to happen is we're going to take this and we're going to convert this into a harvestable item. So you do need to make some changes with the mesh. So you're going to need NIF scope. I've got one of the latest versions, pre-alpha 5. There is pre-alpha 6 at the time of this video, but 5 will do absolutely fine. And as it's laid out, it's just a normal sort of setup mesh, but we need to convert it into a harvestable item. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to drag this to the side and I'm going to go to my unpacked Skyrim. And I'm going to hunt down one of the vanilla meshes. So I'm going to go under plants and this is full of harvestable items so it should be mushroom too. And I'm going to use this as a base to work off so I know exactly what I'm doing. So I've got them side by side here in NIFScope. I don't really need to see them all that much to be honest. I could probably do it blind but uh, it's good to be able to see. Make sure everything looks fine. And I'm just going to pull both of these down. Now what we need to do is convert it in the way of using a night switch node. Now you'll see that obviously this doesn't have one and what a night switch do node does is when you activate this item it will switch out for a different node which will look visually different so it won't have the ingredients in the jar. So it's actually quite simple, it's not difficult to do. So I need to basically copy this layout here. Now you want to keep the collision and any other small things sort of separate from the switch node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the fade node here and I'm going to alt click node, attach node, and I'm going to attach a switch node. So night switch node. Then in the switch node, I am going to go ahead and attach another node and I'm going to have two ninodes on there. So you'll see that I'm just pretty much copying the layout it's got here. Switch node, ninode, ninode, and then the nitri shapes that I want in those ninodes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the jar first, and I'm going to make sure I do this in order because the order for some meshes does seem to make a bit of a difference. There might be a bit of a quicker way of doing this, but I am no expert in NIFScope. I just noticed there are no tutorials on this, and I thought that I would have a play around, see what I can do, and this does work. So... This method works for me. So I'm going to paste this in. So paste branch. I'm just going to copy and paste branch for each of these. So I'm going to have the jar, cork, warp, and these two here. So I'm going to paste these in. You may have more or less nitro shapes here. So what have we got? We've got them. We need the warp now. So paste that in. Copy this one. Copy that branch and paste it. So there we go. We've got all the nitro shapes in there. Now the other node is going to want roughly the same. So I'm just going to refer to the completed version to make sure I get this the right way around. I have the completed version here. And I'm not entirely sure how the switch node determines which one is the empty one and which one is the full. But as we can see here, the first one seems to be the full version and the second one is the empty one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy the two that I want here that just make up the jar itself. So I'm going to go copy branch. You'll go over that node instead this time. Paste branch. And I'm going to want the cork as well. And copy and paste in there. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is just remove these that are not attached. So I'm going to remove branch. And just do all this very carefully because if you make one slip up anywhere, then you could probably change the wrong setting for something or paste the wrong thing in somewhere and you could easily mess it up. 
So there we go. It's all laid out pretty much the same. When you save this and reload it afterwards, it will kind of reorganize this stuff to be pretty much in the exact same way as this. And just to prove this works, I'm going to go save as desktop and go to my data folder through my shortcut. And I'm just going to save it over the one that I'd already done. So I've got a test jar harvest. So I'm going to save it over that. There we go. So that's sort of reordered them now. Now, as you can see, this is actually reordered them and it seems like that's going to be the wrong way around. So what I'm going to need to do now is this gets a bit fiddly. Like I say, there might actually be a, a proper way of doing this, but I'm just going to paste these branches in because I think that's going to end up being the wrong way around. It would be empty first and then fill up afterwards, which would be wrong. So paste that in. So just make sure it's all the right, right way around and then just remove the branches that you don't need. There we go. So we just want the jar and the cork for that one. So now we can import this into the creation kit and create our very own harvestable item. Okay, so here I am in the creation kit and all I'm gonna do for this is go into this test cell that's in the game already. The AAA delete when done test Jeremy. Bit of a freaky test cell if you've never been here before. But anyway, I'm gonna use this just to test this out. So what I'm gonna do is go under world objects and flora and i'm going to type in mushroom because i'm just going to use one of the existing harvestable items as a base it's easier to do so what i'm going to do first of all obviously give it a unique id so df127 test and harvest and keep it as bleeding crown i happen to have picked the right one because that's pretty much what we're grabbing anyway uh, the model we are now going to change so edit and edit again and point to wherever you've put your mesh. So, got our harvest item. You'll see it's full to begin with there. Looks fine. And keywords, you don't tend to need to have any in these. Ingredient, mushroom 2, that'll stay the same. But if you are harvesting anything else, you can choose something else. Now, with things like coin purses, you can actually use an ingredient as a leveled item. I do believe so I'm not entirely sure where it is there we go uh, you'll see you've got a whole selection of things you can use leveled items here but I'm going to keep it as mushroom too so you can actually have a level items list full of stuff that it can actually give you so you can go ahead and check out the coin purse leveled items list for a kind of base of how to work that but for this I just want one single item so I'm going to select that item that we're going to receive and that's the mushroom but you can play around and do other things so the harvest sound, you can change this up to whatever you want. In fact, you could even put in your own custom sound if you really wanted to. But obviously, mushrooms fine for me. Now, these options here, you've got spring, fall, summer, and winter. These don't appear to have really been used in the game, although it's quite interesting because it does suggest that at one point they were planning to have it change in terms of how much you would actually harvest from this thing, depending on the season. But yeah, just keep these at 100. They don't really seem to do anything. Uh, destruction data is irrelevant. We don't need that. And you've got activate text override. This is where it will say harvest and then the name of what it is. Now, in this case, I have a jar, so I don't really want it to say harvest because I'm not harvesting from a jar. Uh, I'm more like taking something, so I'm going to have it as take bleeding crown. So you can have that to whatever you want. Now, we don't need a script, although if you want to do anything cool and fancy, you, you can add scripts onto here. But that should do for now, so I'm going to create new form. And after I've done that, I'm just going to load that back up to make sure... Oh, wrong one. Just make sure everything checks out. So DF, crown, harvest, mushroom, ingredient, and take. Yep, that's fine. Sometimes when you create a new form, certain things that you set don't get saved, especially scripts. So you have to sort of reopen them after creating a new form off of something for them to work. But in this case, that's worked fine. So I'm just going to drag and drop this in onto the floor in here. Now, in terms of the respawn time of these, by default, the game seems to have it set to 10 days. It might be something that you can change somewhere in game settings, but I wouldn't recommend messing with it. Uh, you'll wait about 10 days after harvesting it and come back and it should have respawned. And we'll actually see that happen when I go in the game and test anyway. So I just went and wandered around Riverwood and traveled the world a little bit, came back after about 14 days and it had respawned. Now, this is in an interior cell, so... Just make sure that if you are using these, 
with an interior cell that you don't have a setting turned on here like the encounter zone set to anything weird like no reset if the cell is not resetting anything at all then you might find that these don't reset if this is outside it should be fine so if it's an exterior this stuff should be absolutely fine but yeah just check things over if it doesn't seem to work for some reason or make sure that the mesh is set up correctly so I've got that dumped in there and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just save this ESP. I did in fact have one in here that I was using to test. So DF127 test, I'm going to overwrite that and save again, make sure it works. And I'm going to go in game and hopefully we'll have this nice little harvestable jar working. Okay, so here we are in game. Don't mind the weird half naked Jeremy NPCs. But if we turn around, we'll have our bleeding crown here. And as you can see, you can take it and it changes. The mesh changes. The collision is sort of automatically disabled until it comes back. And what we'll do is we will just sort of disappear off to Riverwood or wander around the world. And I will come back in about 10 days time and see that that has restored. Okay, so here I am in Riverwood. I have stood here for about 12 days just to make absolutely sure that our bleeding crown is going to respawn. And I'm just going to go back to the Jeremy cell. And if we turn around, there we go. It has actually refilled. Now, obviously, I've cut the video there, so you're thinking, oh, he's cheated. But trust me, I've stood there for 12 days. I didn't really want to have you sat there watching me skip 12 days worth of Skyrim. It does take a little while. So, uh, yep, now we crouch down. We'll do it again. And as you can see, it has added Bleeding Crown. Now, if you wanted to harvest a little more than that, like I say, you could use level items list and such. Uh, but uh, that works absolutely fine. You can do really what you want. So before I go ahead and end this video, I just thought I would show what happens with coin purses. Now what we've done so far is have a mesh which when it is activated, it swaps it out for one that's similar with just a few things missing. Now coin purses in the game, you pick these up and they completely disappear. Now how is this going to work in here? Well Bethesda have set it up in quite a clever way and if we just remove the coin purse, it actually replaces it with a mesh that is pretty much invisible. It just has a sort of shape framework and it's totally invisible. Now, instead of trying to make one of these for your own mesh, what I would suggest as a little workaround is just using the null texture set. If you don't know what that is, then you can go ahead and check out my texture sets video that's at the top right. And you'll see that in the creation kit, there is a null texture set that you can use and what I would recommend is you have your Ninode, exactly the same item for each. So whether it be a jar, whatever it is, if you want it to completely disappear, then just have it exactly the same. And then on one of them in the creation kit, make note the number of the one that's supposed to disappear and texture set a null texture set over it. So one of them is then pretty much invisible and the other one is visible. And that would be a really good workaround for doing that. So that's how they've done the coins. And like I say, they've used level items to give you multiple and random amounts of coins. And that is it for another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. You can, of course, go ahead and check everything else that I do out on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk. And also I have various links on there to my social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, where I post my announcements. And also feel free to come ahead and join us on the Discord, where we all like to chat about mods, share mods, and help each other out with mods if you, if you need a hand with anything. So please feel free to do that. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you next time.